Hey guys, Miss Carlson here again. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 2, the chemical level of organization, which should be overall a review from your sophomore year of biology. You talked about these things in more detail in biochem, so I'm going to touch on them briefly, and when we get to different units that we need to talk about some of these items in more detail, that's when we'll take care of that information. So make sure you have a template to take a Cornell notes or a notebook sheet of paper, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, the reason why we're going to talk about this is because you have to understand the basic level of organization in order to study the human body. Uh, this is because everything is made up of atoms and the arrangement of those atoms matters. So the chemistry part is the investigation of that matter and those interactions. And from understanding this, we can understand how the levels of organization are created to build an organism. Uh, remember that we have cells that build up to make tissues, tissues build up to make organs, organs build up to make organ systems that can then build yourself an entire organism. So we have to understand the base uh, to understand the bigger parts. So two one reviews what you should know about atoms. We know they're the smallest units of matter. Uh, elements are made up of solely one type of atom and unique by their atomic number. And then of course the electrons control the interactions between them. There's a great table in your book. Uh, it shows you the principal elements in the human body. I will go ahead and kind of look at the significance of some of these elements. And as needed, we're going to talk about them more specifically throughout the year. 2-2 talks about chemical bonds. Um, these can form between ions. They can also create ions. And chemical reactions occur when you break a bond or a bond actually attaches. Then a molecule is atoms bonded with shared electrons. And a compound is two or more elements bonded together. Now there are two types of bonds that we really kind of see. And that those are ionic which again are between ions. The cation is the positive ion and the anion is the negative ion and through these charges that's how these bonds are created through that uh, attraction. And then covalent would be the sharing of electrons. If you have unequal sharing this creates a polar covalent bond or polarity and that's why water is so special and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. And there are also hydrogen bonds that can affect the shapes and properties of molecules, which also um, have a lot to do with how our body functions. Uh, some of the most common ions in the body are uh, in this table, table 2.2, and you should recognize um, these particular ones because they're the electrolytes that basically help our muscles function. And again, we'll talk about these more shortly as well. Okay, so 2-3 talks about chemical reactions, and I'm not going to get into too much detail here. I'm just going to give you the basics and talk about a few vocab terms. We know that chemical reactions are made up of reactants and products, and any reaction in the body is what we call metabolism. We can kind of break these down into two types. Catabolism is a breakdown of complex molecules. Anabolism is when we have a synthesis of new organic molecules, and synthesis just means to create. Um, catabolism is how the cells are going to gain energy to power function, so that's a very important uh, part of bodily processes. Now, enzymes are discussed in section 2.4, and this is kind of a tricky uh, topic, so we're just, again, get into detail later, but enzymes do control chemical reactions. They are catalysts, which means uh, they speed up reactions. And these graphs tend to be kind of confusing for most students, but you start off with your reactant, and without an enzyme, you have this huge kind of hill to climb. This takes more time than going over this short little um, hill, I'm just calling it, with an enzyme. So the enzyme speeds up that reaction so we can get the product quicker and the reaction then will get done in a sooner time and that is better for our bodily processes as well. Um, a few terms that you should be aware of, activation, activation energy is the amount of energy required to start a reaction and then there are two types. Exergonic is going to release heat and then endergonic is going to absorb heat. 2,5 goes into inorganic versus organic, or in other words, uh, organic having carbon. 
as a base or inorganic not having carbon as a base. Uh, two key vocab terms here to just be aware of. Uh, nutrients are essential elements and molecules obtained from our diet, and then metabolites are just molecules broken down or synthesized inside our bodies, which could also include nutrients. Uh, 2.6 starts talking about why we depend on water. It is our most important inorganic component. Uh, it's a great solvent. It has a high heat capacity. Um, it helps with metabolic reactions. And then it can also ionize or dissociate uh, inorganic compounds in water. And then we could get these ions, which again, help our systems function properly. And here's a picture of a water molecule, and it's showing you how these positive poles and a negative pole uh, create the polarity of this molecule and all of its uh, special, unique properties that water is able to provide for us. All right, brief touch on pH. Um, it's really important that our blood specifically stays at this very small range. So it is vital for homeostasis for this to happen. So basically you just need to remember that anything below a seven is gonna be acidic. Um, and the, more cl the closer you get to one, the more acidic it is. Anything above a seven is a base. The closer you get to 14, the more basic you are. So the blood pH is about 7.35 to 7.45. And we have a small window there uh, that we can actually get out of before we start having problems with bodily functions. All right, a little bit more about acids and bases. Acids are gonna release hydrogen ions and bases are going to remove them. And then salts are those electrolytes that I mentioned earlier. Uh, they're like a switch and basically they control muscle movement. They time the actions of your muscles, uh, which also involves your brain. So that's why we always talk about um, having electrolytes, a lot of them when you're working out. Uh, that's where Gatorade gets its big advertisement for. Uh, there are also buffers that help maintain pH within normal limits. Uh, for example, if you have acid reflux, a lot of times you're going to take Alka-Seltzer, Tom's Rolaids. It helps tie up those excess hydrogen ions that are being released by the acid and then helps maintain your pH. Uh, there's more information about buffers in Chapter 18, or we'll get into it later. Okay, now we're getting into your organic compounds. 2.9 talks about carbs, 2.10 talks about lipids. Carbs are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a ratio of one to two to one. It is our most important energy source. And there are monosaccharides, meaning single simple sugars, disaccharides, double, and then polysaccharides made up of many sugars. Our lipids are carbon and hydrogen in ratios of one to two. They are water soluble, so they will not break down in water. And some examples include fats, oils, and waxes. There are also four main classes of lipids, uh, fatty acids, fats, steroids, and phospholipids. Phospholipids are gonna be a really important one for us because they make up the majority of the cell membrane. The other two main organic compounds are proteins and nucleic acids. Uh, proteins are formed from amino acids and they contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen plus nitrogen. They're linked together by peptide bonds and the shape determines the function of the protein. And enzymes are actually biological proteins. And in an enzymatic reaction, you have a substrate which is determined as your reactant. It will bind to an active site and then form a product. They're very specific, uh, kind of like lock and key. And then your nucleic acids store and process information. So we know we have two types. We have deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, and ribonucleic acid, or RNA. They're made up of chains of nucleotides that are composed of sugar, phosphate groups, and nitrogenous bases. And this picture here shows you the nitrogenous bases available. A, G, C, and T are going to make up your DNA. Uracil is for RNA only and will substitute the thymine. And this is a basic structure of one nucleotide. 213 touches on ATP. Uh, the main thing you need to know, it is a high energy compound. It is our most important energy uh, compound. And if we add a phosphate, we get ATP. If we release a phosphate, we have ADP. 
the if we want energy available we're going to have that ATP once we release that phosphate group we need energy so we use it up so we have our fully charged battery here with ATP ready to go when we need that energy we're going to release that phosphate group and use it up and create ADP which is just a partially charged battery and this picture over here kind of shows you a rough idea of how that looks Finally, 214, not much to talk about here because we're going to move into unit two and talk about cells and tissues, but um, basically the biochemical building blocks form our cells, which are the basic and most, uh, the smallest living unit uh, that we look at when we're talking about uh, humans and human anatomy. So that is it. Uh, chapter two review is on pages 51 through 54. Make sure you know the key terms on page 51 and I'll see you next time.